Let us see about voltage control of single phase inverter. We have already seen about the single phase inverter operation. It consists of four thyristors and the load will be connected between the two legs. And it actually converts DC to AC and you get a square wave AC output. Let us see what is the need for voltage control. Suppose you take an example of an induction motor. If you want to control the speed of this motor, we need to uh, maintain this V by F ratio constant. So in such cases, we have to control the inverter. So, and some applications may require a constant voltage at the inverter. So depending upon the application, we need to control the output voltage of the inverter. There are different methods to control the output voltage of an inverter. So we know an inverter converts DC to AC. Now I want to control the output voltage of this AC. So what can I do is Either I can use some external circuit to control this AC output voltage or I can vary this voltage by using some external circuit or I can simply control this inverter and control the output voltage using pulse width modulation technique. So let us see all these uh, methods one by one. The first method is external control of AC output voltage. It means that you are controlling this AC output voltage. Okay. So you can either, uh, either use a AC voltage controller or you can use a series inverter at this end, at this AC end so that your AC becomes a controlled AC. So in AC voltage control method, the output of this uh, inverter AC output is given to the AC voltage controller which converts this uncontrollable AC to a controlled AC output. But the problem with this method is that it, in, it introduces more harmonic content into the output voltage. So this method is rarely used. So next is series inverter control method. So in this case, you can see that the inverter output is connected to a transformer. So the primary of the transformer is connected to the inverter output, while the secondary of all the transformers are connected together. So the secondary voltages get added. Actually, it is a phasor addition. So you have V1 here and V2 here. So depending upon the phase difference, you will get phi here. And the resultant voltage is VL. The only problem in this method is that the frequency of this inverter output V1 and V2 should be same so that you can add it. So the phase of sum of the two voltages will give you the resultant voltage VL is equal to V1 square plus V2 square plus 2V1 V2 cos phi. So square root of that. So when this phi is equal to 0, that is when there is no phase difference, VL is equal to Vn plus V2. And when pi is equal to pi, that is 180 degrees, VL will be equal to V1 minus V2 and when both this magnitude are equal, it will be resultant voltage will become 0. So next is external control of DC input voltage. It means that the inverter input voltage is controlled here. So, so far we have seen how to control the AC voltage, inverter output voltage. Now how to control the inverter input voltage. So you can, how to get a D, control DC here, you can use a control rectifier or you can use a diode rectifier and a chopper. So you will get a control DC here or you can use the AC voltage controller which gives you a controlled AC 
after that you can use a uncontrolled rectifier or if you have a, a DC input directly you can use a chopper so inverter AC load this part is fixed you are going to change only the input side so give it to a fully controlled rectifier and filter you can give a give it to the inverter or you can use the uncontrolled rectifier that is diode rectifier and then give it to a chopper so you will get a controlled DC or you can give a AC voltage controller and a uncontrolled rectifier or if you have a DC input you can give it to chopper directly however the problem with this uh, method is that more power conversion stages are used which leads to more losses and because of that efficiency is reduced and you need a filter stage to remove the ripple in the DC voltage which will increase the size and cost and the weight of the whole circuit and because of this uh, filter and so many uh, power components response will be very slow so next is the internal control of inverter where you will not have any external devices so this method is said to be the efficient method so this is achieved by pulse width modulation it means that the output voltage you are controlling by varying the pulse width so by this pulse width modulation technique we can reduce the lower order harmonics easily and higher order harmonics can be easily filtered out because when the frequency order is high filter size will get reduced so let us see what is pulse width modulation so here you can see that there is a sawtooth waveform and a DC signal okay like this so you are comparing these two so you give this to a comparator so you will get a pulse like this suppose I want to change the width of this pulse okay so what I have to do I have to change the magnitude of this one it means that I have a waveform like this I am comparing one signal with this so my pulse will be here suppose I am changing the I want to change the pulse width so I am changing the magnitude of the signal so my pulse width now comes like this so my pulse width changes so if my pulse width is this one my average value is here say it is some 100 volt if I want 200 volt I will increase the pulse width so average value increases and this becomes 200 volt okay so this is what a pulse width modulation circuit will do you have to compare a sawtooth waveform of very high frequency signal with our signal modulating signal you compare these two and when, uh, at the crossover points you will get the pulse so if you want a higher width you change the modulating signal magnitude So the points to remember here are you can control the output voltage of the inverter by three different methods external control of AC voltage so you can use AC voltage controller or series inverter and external control of DC voltage and internal control of inverter so that is pulse width modulation. So this method is said to be the efficient method because you don't need any extra components for this. And if you need the study material you can go through this website and if you like the video do subscribe to our read electric vehicle channel. And these are some of the references.